So a while ago I uploaded here on this channel my version of the Beethoven Moonlight Sonata. You know we are here in the midst of experimenting or testing if you would like to call it like that. Uh, the what we believe might very well be an historical way of the metronome use where the metronome ticks do not indicate the note values, the full note values of the metronome mark but actually the subdivision. And in an ongoing experimentation we are holding that practice to a test by a lot of recordings that we play according to that metronome practice of which we believe is historically really correct. And so the Moonlight Sonata was one of those uploads and of course you all know that piece so well so I can imagine if you've heard that that might have been a little bit of a shock. And you have the first movement which is very known but also there is a third movement, the Presto Agitato, which I played in this way. Compare this to a tempo of a recording that was uploaded at the same time about by Valentina Lesitsa. So and there you have the two most extreme differences of an interpretation where my version has the interpretation of the whole beat 92 half note of journey which results in a single beat quarter note version and Lizitsa is playing almost double as fast and so I want to avoid as much as I can the question who's right and who's wrong at the end we are responsible for the interpretation that we serve to our audience but there is another spot in this third movement that is getting much less attention than the, than the beginning and that's this one. So and if you compare my version now to that of Valentina Lesitsa you might get a shock. Listen. at the beginning where my tempo was half as slow or fast as her tempo. Now in this passage where Beethoven increases the tempo by adding arpeggios in 32nd notes, double the note value of the beginning. I'm doubling the tempo by playing 30 seconds, double as fast as the 16th, but Valentina Lesitsa, as all the pianists, are slowing down in this passage considerably. reason. I mean in Lizitsa's tempo one would have to play way above 20 notes a second even though it's our arpeggios and arpeggios you can play faster than just scales or, or, or even other dip, more difficult patterns on the piano but even I mean 23-24 notes a second that's the speed that she and others should be playing here in this passage where Beethoven is increasing the tension of this piece by going from 16th notes suddenly to 32nd notes, building the climax. Now what all pianists are doing is taking back tempo and actually slowing down until my whole beat tempo. And 
this is something that you have to think about because Beethoven does not indicate any kind of ritardando. The 32nd notes here are not structural note values that determine the tempo of the whole piece and if they did you should take them into account. At the maximum you could say that the tempo that Czerny gave in my interpretation of whole beat is kind of calculated or based upon this passage where I also am playing like 30 notes a second. That's the maximum you can do I think or what Czerny was thinking that you can do. So he might have been calculating his tempo on these 30 second notes but he takes that tempo for the entire piece. There is no indication this score, if we all have to follow the score, where Beethoven gives you the possibility of taking a different tempo at the beginning and throughout the piece and then slowing down in these bars, um, like falling back on a tempo that's half as fast. So here you come to the question. If you ask the question, who's right and who's wrong? There is no other option for me to say that my interpretation of the text was right and that of Lesitzas and others is simply wrong. It's slowing down here is going against everything that Beethoven has actually trying to make clear to the musician. He wants an increase in tempo. He wants a doubling of tempo. He wants an increase of tension. And of course, this leads to the climax and to the finale of the piece. And so, these are just eight bars, guys. But if, this, if it's not possible to double the tempo that one chooses at the beginning, then this little problem is actually significant and can be held as a problem for the whole. Because if we have to reconstruct this movement based upon you know, this relationship of notation. Why shouldn't then a presto tempo that I had for this movement not be valid for other presto movements? And if that's the presto movement, why should all the other allegros not be considerably slower? And so you'll have a drop down reconstruction, so to say, just based upon these eight bars. And you might think that's a little bit of overestimating the value of these bars, but I don't think so, because if you don't do that, then we have to assume that Beethoven made a mistake, another one. And I'm not willing to go there unless I really don't see another solution. And there is another solution, we all know that. That's just as metronome numbers, they are not being read in those days as today. So. Only applying the WBMP, the whole beat metronome practice, solves all of those problems, all of those problems at once. You not only solve these notational problems, you not only solve all the, the, the passages that are unplayable today and, and, and I mean go over some metronome marks of IMSLP. Don't take my word for that. There are a lot of metronome marks that no one ever will be able to play. We simply cannot play in speeds of 16, 17, 20, 25, even 30 notes a second constantly. So not only that has been solved by the application of the whole beat metronome practice, but also pedal use. You can just simply apply the historical pedal. You can apply the historical fingerings. Accentuation patterns becomes a thing now. We can do that. So all the, all the aspects that until now caused so many, many problems, yet we find that the score must be followed all the way, but the score is not followable. There are too many instances like this where you come in a situation where you have a problem, that you need to make an exception, that you need like here. So many pianists slow down there because what else can you do? You are already on the top of the top of the top of speeds and don't get me wrong, what Lizitsa is doing is really impressive technically and uh, we know from a perspective of number of notes per second. You're not going to play that faster. So what else can you do than just apply the thing that makes sense? Just think about it for yourself. What's the implication of this? Notation is something we're going to come back to a lot of times because it's Something that we have to connect to metronome numbers. Why? Because they represent the same thing. And in the middle you have the Italian tempo words. And it's quite ironic that at the time of the invention of the metronome, composers like Beethoven were very happy that they could get rid of those Italian tempo words, which they, by the way, did not. 
because they didn't represent the real tempo that I wanted. The metronome numbers would solve that problem. And today we are going back to the notation and to the Italian tempo words to reconstruct the metronome numbers. So it's actually ironic, but it's cool at the same time. So go sit down at your piano and try that passage for yourself. As you know, I'm convinced that if you want to reconstruct something that's called music, then you have to play. There is a lot talking about this, I think a little bit too much sometimes, and there is not enough playing. So just try it out for yourself. Let me know in the comment boxes um, how your experiment went. And then I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video. See you soon again.